All right, good morning. Welcome back to Daily Devotions. Today we're in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. This is the last chapter in the book of Luke. So let's go ahead and jump into it here. Um, now, upon the first day of the week, Jesus had just died very early in the morning. There came to the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. These are the, the, the ladies who had prepared spices to bring it to, G, to the body of Jesus. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in, and they found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass that they were placed there about. Behold, two men stood by them in shining of garments, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek the living among the dead? He's not here, but he's risen. Remember how he spake unto you whenever he was in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinners and crucified on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And returning from the sepulcher, they told all the things unto the eleven and to the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanne and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which had told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to be idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran to the sepulchre, and stooping down, and beheld the linen cloth laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. All right, so it was Jewish custom for the body to be visited on the third day to see if the soul had returned to the body. The order of events is very memorable. The Marys come to the tomb. Um, whenever you take Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John put together, you'll see there was an earthquake. The door was open. They came, they saw an angel or two. His, the countenance was as lightning, his raiment white as snow. The keepers, the guards of the temple became as dead men. The angel said, fear not, I know you're looking for Jesus. He's not here. Why would the living be among the dead? He's risen as he said. They ran and they told everything they knew. But the good news was met with unbelief. But Peter runs to the tomb and wonders, what does all of this mean? And behold, two of them, which went out the same day into the village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together along the way of all the things that had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus drew himself near and went to them. But their eyes were holding that which they knew not. And he said to them, What manner of communications are these that you have one another? As you walk, you look sad. And one of them said, whose name was Cleos, answered, saying, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Hast thou not known the things which have come to pass there in these days? And he said, What things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and the people, how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to condemnation to death and crucified him. But we trusted that in had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since the things which were done. Yea, and certain women also in the company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it, even as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said to them, O fool, slow of heart, to believe all the prophets had spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered the things and risen into glory? And being, beginning at Moses and the prophets, he expended them the scriptures which he concerning himself. And they drew nigh to the village, whither they went, and made as though he had gone further. And they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is evening time, and the day is far spent. And he went and tarried with them. And it came to pass that he sat and meet with them. He took bread and blessed it and break and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened us the scripture? And they rose up the same hour and went, returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and those that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they that told the things which were done by the way and how he was known in the breaking of the bread. Isn't Jesus typically known in the breaking? Don't we normally get close to him in the broken moments of life? These two grieving men conversed about Jesus' crucifixion, and they struggled to figure out what they meant. Jesus saw their confusion and began to tell them everything from Genesis to present, how the prophets fulfilled it. He joined them, and he began to explain his resurrection in the light of Scripture. 
But by the end of their time together, it, was, it all made sense. Because the thing, leaders interpret reality for others. They see the bigger picture. They see the Genesis to the Revelation, the beginning to the ending, and have a leadership bias. They offer clear perspective to those who need it. Leaders understand current events and how they fit into the overall scheme of things. Remember, who you are dictates what you see. Who you are dictates what you see. And as thus they spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened. Suppose they saw a spirit, and he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do you, why are these thoughts arising in your hearts? Behold, my hands, my feet, that is, I myself handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you have seen me. And when he had spoke thus, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, and wondered, he said to them, Have you here any meat? And he gave them a piece of boiled bread and a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat it before them. And he said to them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was with you, the things that must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, It behooved Christ to suffer and to rise to the dead on the third day. And that repentance and the mission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are the witnesses of these things. And behold, I was in the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. His last words were their first concern. Luke 24 records the son, the son of Jesus' words to his disciples. He had trained them for more than three years, and now they're ready to go out and train others themselves. Jesus' work would have been useless if they had not taken what he had given them and re reproduced it in the lives of others. He entrusted his entire mission in the hands of former fishermen and tax collectors. And this is what he told them to do. Go to Jerusalem and wait till you receive power from on high and preach the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. We see this play out in the book of Acts. Luke is believed to also write the book of Acts, where Acts 1 tells the same story as Luke 24. Kind of the, like at the beginning of a new episode of a show, it'll say previously on, that's what Acts 1 is to Luke 24. It's a continuation. What a difference in the behavior of Jesus' disciples before the resurrection and after it. Just before all they, they, all they had was like a spiritual leader, a spiritual a rabbi. They, and then whenever he died, they ran from everyone hoping to save their own lives. But after the ascension, they had a conviction and they had a testimony. They became invincible. Jesus instilled in them a confidence to turn the world upside down. Jesus' resurrection brought victory and hope. Here's what it says. And they led them out to far Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they continued in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. And that is the book of Luke, chapter 24. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next week with the Gospel of John. Bye-bye.